Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone for, for coming. So yeah, I'm going to be talking about this uh, library that we have in, in Carto, the, the analytic toolbox. So yeah, I'm Victor. I come from, from Carto. In Carto, we do data visualization. Maybe some of you have been at the presentation by my colleagues, Alberto or, or Felix, that they show very impressive uh, renderings and with large data sets. But we also do analysis, which might not be so um, attractive or impressive or so sexy to show, but we do a lot of analysis in these libraries what is underneath all, all our, our analytical tools. So this is what I'm going to, to be explaining today. A little bit about myself. I've been working in Carter for the last year. Before that, I spent like roughly 10 years developing QGIS stuff, developing quite a few plugins. If you've seen the car plugin before, that's something that I did. If you've been to the talk before, I also wrote the original Orfeo toolbox integration to QGIS, so basically doing a lot of stuff into QGIS. And my main contribution, I guess, to the open source GIS world is the QGIS uh, processing framework. And if you're familiar with, with that, uh, you are going to see that some of the things that I'm going to present here today, you're going to, to see that there's some similarities because actually the work that I do in, in Carto basically is to bring all that expertise that I got from doing special analysis in QGIS into the, the Carto platform. And so okay, so in short, if you, there's some idea that I want you to take home is that these um, analytic toolbox that we have is basically a, co a collection, an homogeneous collection of special analysis functions that works across data warehouses. And I would like to put the emphasis here on this homogeneous because it's a set of functions that work more or less the same in different data warehouses. And that's the idea that, that we have when, when creating these. That So you should be able to do that special analysis, the same special analysis, no matter what data warehouse you, you are using, right? So this is the basic idea. I'm going to be talking about this collection of, of uh, function. So a quick uh, word about databases and data warehouses. I haven't seen a lot of presentation talking actually about data warehouses. In case you're not so familiar, databases, I guess everyone knows what a database is, right? You put data into a database to manage that data. You can insert new data into a database. You can make queries to the database. In general, databases are uh, capable of handling a lot of simultaneous requests. The idea of a data warehouse is based on, on, on a database, let's say, but the main goal is not to be able to make these queries or to insert data or to just get the result of those queries, but actually to analyze, right, to that data that is in the, in the, in the database, be able to analyze, maybe do full scans, that you need to extract some more information from there. So they're not so well prepared maybe to have a lot of concurrent access at the same time, but they're better prepared to be uh, efficient when doing those analysis, right? So these tools I'm going to present, they run on most of the most uh, popular data warehouses nowadays, and what we do is actually to add that uh, special capabilities into them, right? So what happens is that we have different support for special operations in data warehouses. There are several data warehouses. All of them support special data. So if you are familiar with the idea of Postgres and PostGIS, like Postgres doesn't have support for special things, but PostGIS adds that, the support for native spatial objects, and then the functions to do things with, with those objects. Data warehouses, most of the, the most popular ones, they have support for these geographies or geometries, but then they don't have such a large array of functions to actually analyze and work on, on them. So what we do is we use that support that they have, but we enhance the, the tools that, that you can find in there. And we enhance the, the capabilities of these data warehouses by adding these functions that form the uh, analytic toolbox that we have in Carto, right? So the AT, the analytic toolbox, creates like a common ground for a special analysis. As I said, we try to have something homogeneous that, you know, same functions that run across data warehouses so you can do the same analysis, perform the same analysis, spatial analysis in different data warehouses, right? The data warehouses that we're supporting at the moment are these five ones, uh, the support for Databricks is not so strong or stable, but BigQuery, Snowflake, Redshift, and, and Postgres. Postgres is a database, but you can have a, you know, have it deployed in somewhere and, and be working as a, as a data warehouse, even if the, uh, if the performance 
is not like the one that you're going to get with, with BigQuery or, or Snowflake, for, to name those two ones. But yeah, what we have is a set of functions that you can deploy on these data warehouses, and then you have those functions that you can use to analyze the data that you put in, in there, right? What we try to do is to change that idea of ETL. If you haven't heard of that, it means extract, transform, and load. So what we do is try to change that, that approach. Like you extract the data, you have your data, then you uh, transform your data, do whatever you want with them, analyze them, change them, and so on. And then you load them, you put them in your database where you're going to share them or do whatever with them in the, in the database to store them there. Is to actually switch, you know, flip those T and L, the transform and the load, so you can extract the data, then you just put it in the database and you all the transformation that you need to do, they're done on the database, right? With the advantages that that might have uh, from many different points of view. So we are trying to do that. This is something that data warehouses try to do, actually change from ETL to ELT. We are providing the tools uh, to make this possible in the spatial data, right? So in the spatial side of, of things. You can do that with a normal data warehouse if you don't have special data, if you have special data with the help of the functions that, we, that we're sharing here in the uh, analytics toolbox, you can also do that with the special data and you know, relying heavily on the special component of, of your data. This is a quick summary of what, what we have so far. You can see the number of, of uh, functions related to spatial data, so, uh, spatial types in the different data database and data warehouses. As you can see, of course, PostGIS provides a lot of them. Even in that case, we're adding new staff, and in others, they're not so mm, well prepared for, for that. They, they support, as I said, data, spatial data, but they don't have some, such a large array of, of functions, so we add quite a, quite a bit of them. And the idea is to add the same thing in all of them. Like, one of the functions that we might be adding in BigQuery, we might not be adding that to Postgres because already it's already there. But in the end, you're going to have the same things. The idea is that you can do something in Postgres, but then with little changes, you can go to BigQuery and do something similar. Of course, there's, there's changes in the, in, in the SQL dialects, but the part that actually performs the spatial analysis, we try to have the same thing across all this data warehouse, right? So as I said, in some cases, we might be adding something that is missing, but it's not missing in, in another case. I can put you an example. The Snowflake recently introduced something as simple as a buffer, but there was no buffer function in Snowflake. There were other things, but no buffer. So we were adding a buffer in the analytics toolbox to Snowflake. Of course, we were not adding that into BigQuery and PostGIS because that was there from the very beginning, right? So that's the kind of thing. Now, it doesn't make so much sense to have that buffer in Snowflake because there's a native buffer, but you know that the analytics toolbox provided that, and it will change according to how the, the data warehouses themselves change. Right. An important thing to mention here is that there are two parts of the NA2 box that we call core versus what we call advanced. I'm only going to be discuss, discussing here the core part because it's the open source one and this is an open source convergence. There's an advanced one, but that's not open source. So I'm just going to mention that so you get the, the full image. But uh, those are functions that are not available uh, for general public and they are not open source. Most of the, the stuff that we do in those functions is SQL, but we also use JavaScript and Python because these uh, data warehouses, they support uh, creating and store procedures that rely not only on pure SQL code, but also they can rely on JavaScript or Python libraries. So what we do sometimes is to actually implement the functions, and sometimes we just wrap libraries that exist, like JavaScript libraries or, or Python libraries. Right? This is a good overview of the, of the library, I would say. The core part, this is the part that is open source. As you can see, there are some uh, different modules, as we call them, right? Uh, an important part that I will be talking about that later is uh, built around special indices. That's one of the most popular parts and the most powerful parts of the analytics toolbox. Then we have this advanced and domain-specific. Those are more complex uh, functions. So there are functions that have a more complex logic underneath to perform more specific task or some of them like you see the routing or LDS uh, they don't have all the analysis in the data warehouse itself but they connect to services like TomTom Tom or here for doing routing or, or, or LDS so uh, it's a function that's more complex and is able to do more more stuff those belong in the as I said in the advanced category right 
So as I mentioned, these special indices are something that we use a lot within Carto, and we want people to use that a lot. It, it's a really uh, helpful tool, and so far there's no support for that in data warehouses. So uh, what we have been working a lot in the NIT toolbox is to actually add special indices, like, you know, kind of things. Uh, I had a demo, but I'm not going to, to show it. I, it's actually has something that was computed from, you know, using this these type of analysis, and then you can, this is a case of an S3, uh, so an H3 uh, special index, so we just simplify data using this um, special indices all done through the, uh, the analytics toolbox, and then we have tools to create tile sets with the special indices that also rely on the tools in the, in the analytic toolbox. We have support for Quad and H3, S2, and GeoHash. Most of the work that we actually do on the, the, the most powerful functions around special indices, they are related to Quad and, and H3. So, and that's what we use for many of the things. If I, I mentioned this DECGL demos that my colleagues did the other day, they, they heavily use this, this kind of things. And as I say, underneath all that is the analysis performed by the, by the analytic toolbox, right? You can install it yourself, of course, if you want to use that. Just go to the repo. You can install from there. It's an open source project. You can deploy that with the scripts that, that we provide. But for some of the uh, uh, data warehouses, they're already deployed. So if you use BigQuery, there's a Carto OS, Carto open source um, project in, in BigQuery that you can use to do something like that. If I want to get the coordinates of the center of the H3 hexagon, with that ID, you can just run that in your BigQuery console and, and it's gonna work, right? So uh, the same for um, Snowflake, it's always uh, already available there in the, in the applications. Um, play, I forget the name now, the, the place where you find the, 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 the Snowflake applications, you can find it in there also, our, our extension with, with all the analytic toolbox uh, methods. So the idea of the AT, the IT toolbox, is to serve as a base tool for other things. And that's what we do internally. I mean, we have that. You can use them directly in, in the console. We're running normal SQL code, calling these functions. But we also use that to build other products within Carto. And we want people to use it that way. So not just stay there, not just use that directly in the console as a set of extra SQL functions, but also to build other, other tools, for instance, uh, this is Carto Workflows. This is a tool that it's built on top of these ideas of the analytics toolbox. As I said, you're going to recognize probably some of that previous work of mine that I mentioned with, um, with the QGIS processing framework. There's a QGIS modeler. This is the equivalent of the QGIS modeler, but in, in, uh, in on a data warehouse, and you just put pieces together. These, what it does is to actually translate the graphical language into SQL. It creates SQL code based on that. And that SQL code uses the analytics toolbox to actually perform the operations that are defined there in, uh, in those components that you link graphically in the, in the model, right? So we use the analytic toolbox as the foundation for our own tools. And, and as I said, that's something that we would like other people to also use as well, build more powerful things on top of, of our functions. Um, these products also, they, they shape the, the analytic toolbox, right? So when we add new stuff into the analytic toolbox, we're not only thinking about how they can be called from, um, from the SQL console in BigQuery or in the Snowflake. We also think about how it is going to be used in something like the modeler. And the modeler, for instance, this workflows in, in, Q in, sorry, in, in, in the Carto platform, these workflows, they have a more, probably more GIS approach. Uh, they're not so, like the approach that you have when you use it from the console might not be the same that when you use the Carto workflows. So that somehow shapes the, 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 the way we, you know, the, the, the analytics box and the way we implement functionality in there. So there's a bidirectional relation between uh, the, the toolbox and the things that we build on top of that. And, and the same might happen when, you know, if, if, if you decide to build something on top of that, you're going to find several different versions of some of the things that some of them might be more suitable for being used for a given product that you're building on top instead of just calling the function from the, from the uh, console, right? What is next? And we have, a, as I said, a set of, of function, but of course this is, this is growing. Where, where are we going next? So of course we want to add more tools. 
app, we want to add, there are tools that are still missing, the things that, for, for instance, you might find in PostGIS, but you still don't find it in BigQuery, even with the analytics box. So we want to, you know, fill all those voids. And, and so in the end, we'll have all the functions acro across all the data warehouses. That's something we still have to do. We're constantly thinking about large data sets, so we need better performance. Uh, some of the, the functions in IT toolbox, they work fine with huge data sets. We have added recently a lot of improvements for the special indices functions to work with even larger data sets and things, but we still need to improve the performance and we are we're always trying to get better performance. And we're also trying to add some experimental stuff. We're trying to, you know, try some new things. And one thing that I have added here that I wanted to show you is how we're trying to add uh, artificial intelligence into, into that. It's a very trendy thing. And we're trying somehow to incorporate that into the, into the analytics toolbox with the main idea of allowing people uh, to use the analytics toolbox or workflows, as I, as I showed before, to be able to use that in a more natural language, which is in the end what we have with AI now with these language models. And I have a couple of quick samples to show here. This is a function that is not currently in the analytics toolbox, but it will make its way to the analytics toolbox. So you can select a query to OSM in natural language, right? I want the healthcare facilities in the south of Spain. And that's how you define the map in this Carto Builder. That's the tool that you use to create. You can add there, select mm, whatever from this data set in normal SQL uh, language, but you can also rely on this function to give you this data set that you have defined that in a, in a natural language, right? So that's something that we are experimenting with. Also in Carto workflows, relying of course on functions underneath in the Inatic toolbox. See, I'm doing a filter in here, but the filter condition is not a normal expression, right? It's just rows with names that have less than six characters. I'm expressing that can, that expression, and I'm writing it in, in English instead of in another way, in a more technical way, let's say, that the computer can understand, and that works. And you can generate a new column with AI. In this case, I'm, I'm applying that filter to the layer before, and here what I'm doing is Okay, I'm adding a new column, but what is the new column? Usually you can say is this column multiplied by two. You know, you use a mathematical expression. Here I'm saying like the capital of the state. That's what I'm saying. And it can actually take the layer from here, the, the original table, filter it, get me the states, and then add the capital, right? So that's some more experimental thing that we're doing because we also want to expand the, the reach of these functions to you know, this new territory. This so far is only, we're only implementing that in, in BigQuery because there's uh, uh, this generative AI in BigQuery that some support for that in order. We still haven't, haven't tried so far to, to do that. 